So have you ever been in the market to get a high performance gaming mouse and you see all these numbers and metrics being thrown at you such as polling rate and DPI? Well, in this video, I want to tell you what those numbers mean and why should you care about and what is a good number if you're thinking about getting a nicer mouse for your gaming or your workflow experience. If this is the first time you're stopping by, my name is Sean. This is my tech channel where I do unboxing reviews and tutorials and tech reviews like this one. So if you think you will enjoy videos like this, please consider subscribing. So let's start with the polling rate because that one's a little bit easier to explain. Polling rate is measured in Hertz and it measures how fast or how frequent your mouse is communicating its position to your computer. So higher polling rate, that means more frequently and faster the mouse is communicating its position to the computer. That means potentially a smoother experience, whether you're gaming or you're moving around your workflow, doing any kind of art design and whatnot. This particular mouse that I have, by the way, this is the Keychron M3 Wireless Mini 4K Metal Edition. I know it's a mouthful. This is a really good option for the price. It's considered to be a premium option. So if you're a serious gamer or you really wanna get yourself a nice mouse, this is the one that you can consider getting. So this one goes all the way up to 4,000 Hertz. To put it to perspective, a 1,000 Hertz polling rate means the mouse is communicating to the computer its position once every one millisecond. So naturally you can imagine the higher the polling rate, the better. But to be fair, I have to put this out there. While you get better and faster communication between the mouse and the computer, if you look at the polling rate that is higher, you're not gonna get a one to one return for that. The performance in real life, it kind of goes on a log curve. What that means is a 4,000 Hertz polling rate in real life is not gonna be four times faster than 1000 Hertz. And also to be fair, anything faster than one millisecond, you may or may not even notice. That's why a common go-to polling rate for most gamers is typically around 1000 Hertz. And next I wanna tell you about DPI or also known as CPI, what it is, and why should you care about it? But first, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of this video, Provado VPN. Provado VPN is a VPN service that is very budget-friendly and very easy to access. It gives you online protection, malware protection, internet privacy, and a lot more everything else that will come with a VPN service. For example, if you want to watch any kind of streaming content, you will be able to unlock new content in other regions that you normally wouldn't have access to. They also have a no-log a VPN policy, which means they are not keeping record of any of your activities online, which means no one else can. You can sign up for the free VPN service right now, no strings attached, and you get 10 gigs of data transfer for free every month. They do have a two year plan that is 30 bucks, depending on when you're watching this, they have a holiday sale going on, you get an extra three months, so 27 months for 30 bucks. Thanks. Provado VPN for sponsoring this video. So we were talking about DPI or CPI, which is uh, dots per inch or counts per inch. That is your mouse's sensitivity. It measures the amount of distance the mouse moves on the surface on your desk in relations to how many pixels it moves across the screen. So for example, a DPI of 800, it measures if you move the mouse one inch on the desk it moves 800 pixels. Now this matters for two different reasons. Number one, if you are gaming and you do need to pan fairly fast across the screen, whether it's a first person shooter and whatnot, the higher the DPI, the faster you can have some of these pan motions. The second benefit of that is, even if you don't want to pan that fast, you can still turn your hardware DPI in the mouse up and then you turn your in-game sensitivity down. Let me explain. Hopefully you can follow along. Imagine you have a mouse at 400 DPI with a sensitivity, in-game sensitivity of one. Now, you can go ahead, double the sensitivity of the mouse from 400 to 800, right? So if you don't change anything else in the game, then you're able to pan and move uh, your crosshair twice as fast essentially in the game. If you don't want that, 
you can actually turn your in-game sensitivity down to 0.5. You basically cut it in half. So the game sensitivity overall feels the same. However, you basically now double the amount of small movements or pixels or dots that the mouse can measure. And then pairing that with a high polling rate, then when you pan, uh, across the screen and you're moving really fast, you're not going to get that pixelated jumps because there are more movements that uh, basically this mouse can measure. So it also helps with micro movements because now your mouse is a lot more sensitive. So a smallest move, it would actually translate to in-game. This could be good, this could be bad. You have to build up your tolerance for that. What I do like about this is you can actually change the DPI and your polling rate right from back of the mouse. Now there could be other aspect of a gaming mouse that is more important than some of those metrics that you do need to consider and look at the complete package. For example, one is weight. For example, this one, the metal edition of this mouse that they have, it weighs I think about 64 grams or so. The other thing is the battery ergonomics and size. This one, a perfectly balanced mouse, right? So not only it's light, but the weight distribution is nice. So if you're playing very long sessions, small things like this can really impact your comfort level. The shape, for example, I do not like small mouses. I like a nice, almost even shape. So it covers my hand really nicely. I do have big hands and I hate small mouses, but for me, this happens to be a really nice size. This has a 600 milliamp battery. They claim to have a battery life of 135 hours, but I suspect that is not at the highest DPI and is not at the highest polling rate. Let me bring the camera over so I can show you a little bit more about this. So this is the Keychron M3 Mini 4K Magnesium Alloy Edition. So this is the size of the mouse. Uh, like I said, it's very, very comfortable. Uh, these paddings down here, they are Teflon or some sort of Teflon. So it's very, very smooth to help you glide a little bit better across. Oh, you also get this really cool keyboard shape Wi-Fi transmitter. So why do you need this? And when should you consider connecting using cable versus Bluetooth versus using this? And yes, the connection is in the front. So unlike Mac devices, you can simply charge and connect and use all at once. The way you would change your DPI is using this button. So you have five different lights, white, green, blue, orange, and red. That is basically lowest to highest DPI. And then on this side, you can adjust your polling rates and you have five different levels. One, two, three, and then double light with blue, double light with white. Hi there, this is Future Me. I was just editing a video. I realized I had made two mistakes in the video. Somewhere in the video, I will be saying that the driver, the software for you to further customize this mouse for Mac is not out yet. Well, it is, I just had a chance to check it out. Number two, I mentioned that you can adjust the DPI of the mouse using the button down here, but uh, you actually need to also use the software if you want to go above 5,000 DPI. So you can use this to go all the way up to 5,000 DPI. And if you want to go from 5,000 DPI to 26,000, you need to use the software. What's nice is then whatever you adjust and select, it will be sticky and it will be remembered in the mouse. So if you switch your mouse and even go to a different computer, when I tested it, looks like it retained that information. Back to the video. If you actually want to get 2000 and 4000 DPI, you actually must use this uh, 4K or 2.4 gigahertz transmitter that they have. Uh, otherwise, if you want to use this wired, the maximum you get is 1000 Hertz. So for gaming, you can still use it wireless, but uh, you will connect using this, but basic Bluetooth, I would not recommend this for high performance gaming. So here's a demonstration of high versus low DPI. So you can see how much I'm moving the physical mouse on the table and you can look at the movement on the screen. So if I want to go across the screen, I literally have to do multiple swipes and multiple passes. This is a demonstration of what low 
DPI is essentially, right? So I go up one, and then you can see the movement. It's a little bit faster, even higher. And now this is super sensitive. And then the last one, which is extremely fast, and it gives you such a smooth movement of the mouse. So if I want to go very slowly, I have access to precision movements, or if I want to go really fast, I can do that. If you were going to check out this mouse, this metal edi uh, edition, which is more expensive, and it is, I think, about 10 grams heavier. Currently, it's only available, I think, on their website, and I did not see it on Amazon. But if you are looking at the regular M3 Mini, which you do get the 4,000 hertz uh, polling rate, that one's about 30 bucks less, and it's also available on Amazon. I'll put the link to both of them down below so you can definitely check it out. So this has been it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully, I was able to do an above average job breaking down DPI and polling rate for you. Hopefully, you learned something new. If not, hopefully, at least had fun. Thanks Provado VPN for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the links down in the description below. As always, thanks for your support and I'll see you in the next one.